Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're going to bring you another episode of Free Pattern Friday. That's right, FPF, Free Pattern Friday. And today we're going to talk about tulips. Now, I dropped this pattern in our Facebook group by accident and then somebody started asking me about it. I was like, oh, I forgot to film it. We haven't filmed it yet. So today we're filming it. But first, before you go, we start making tulip blocks, I want to talk to you about Sobeka. Her YouTube channel does lots of fun things, and I've mostly enjoyed, recently, she's uh, doing a thing on wellness and her health. So I think that is just a wonderful addition to her channel. So I'll put her channel in our show notes below, as well as the pattern for the tulip. Okay, come on in, let's get to the sewing. Okay, for this tulip, now this... I can't remember now if this was my mom's tulip or my tulip or you know, we kind of like played around with it. Anyways, you need a, uh, what is it, 10 and a half inch square of background. And I, it, I wasn't fussy when, you know, like you can make any size background you want, right? So we're going to keep this one kind of close handy. We're going to need this in a bit. Now what I did was I went through my scraps, of course, and I got... A purple scrap, which is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of cute. I thought it was cute. And I'm going to work from the back side so we don't have to see. You don't have to see too much. Now, this tulip is actually very quick to do. And I'm just going to use a pen to mark out the back. I mean, you can, you know, cut along with a rotary cutter if you want, or scissors, or however you want to do this, but these are cardboard templates that I made. From the template I'm going to be providing you in the show notes below, right? That's where this template's going to be. So you can see I've done it this way. Now I can either do a scissor cut or whatever I need to do. So now with the other part of the blossom, this is a three-part blossom. Okay, so once I get the, the shape cut, now I have my rotary cutter here as well as a scissor. Because once I get this shape cut, I'm going to turn it like this to get the other side. Now the straight of grain has to be this way on these. And I think I've got that drawn in on the powder. I'm pretty sure I do. Because and your straight of grain has to be this way. You know, this way up and down on the on this otherwise it it kind of looks it looks saggy it doesn't sit nice you know well I guess you know you could fix it rectify it by you know putting starch on it or whatever so there I've drawn out my two pieces yeah and I've used a pen right so what I'm going to do now with this with my straight edge stuff I'm just gonna take this and I'm Open my cutting rotary cutter, cut that part, cut this. These rotary cutters are such great inventions. They really were. The best invention ever. And, um, or the idea. And there's a lot of different rotary cutter companies now, but, and... There we go. So I'm going to use that for dog bed. That's fine. Now this, I'm just going to use the rotary cutter for the uh, flat stuff. I'm not going to try and negotiate around a curve with a big 45. If you're going to do rotary cutting curves, do use a like the smaller one, the next size smaller, it actually works so much better. Now these tops are kind of curved as well. So, no, uh, no. This seam allowance is already included in the pattern. And all you need now is to just make sure you cut out the right shape. There we go. There's one, and that's a really bright pink. And here's hopefully the other side of this. Oh, 
Oh, it's not the right size. Okay, so I guess we're gonna get a different, different one here. We're gonna get a different pink because I can't have two sides. I have, I need one side reverse. I need one cut one way and one cut the other way. This is not going to work. So let me go get another piece of pink. Okay, <laughs> I corrected this. I just grabbed another piece of fabric and cut it the right way. And on this, this template here, it should say make two flip over for the second cut. Yeah, you're making one reverse and then you make one reverse. So you just flip it over. I will make probably yet another tulip, but that's okay. But one of the things too, when you're doing this, because we're gonna do this as an applique, you wanna draw a line this way and this way on the back so you know exactly where that quarter inch is. Now I'm gonna try and do that in pencil because I'm going to use this as a charity block. So, and you wanna do it on these corners and this one as well. So what you wanna do is you wanna just draw, okay, where is my quarter inch? My quarter inch is right here and right here. So you just wanna draw that quarter inch out in there and put a little X, marks the spot, right? So you wanna make sure you do this one as well. Yeah, I'm gonna have two of these. Oh well, that's okay. That's okay, it'll look cute. There's one. There's the other one there. Now, the reason you're drawing that there is you, that's where you need to stop, right? If you want this to turn correctly, so let me just, oh yeah, I should probably do this one too. Because then I'll have a pin, I'll put a pin in. Mm, there. Just mark it. It's kind of like a, it's an old hand piecer's trick to get you to hand piece the right, right to the point, the right point you need. So it's kind of a, sometimes these old hand piecing tricks are really good. So now when you're putting that together, before you put it under your sewing machine, right? You're gonna lay all of this out the right way. And then you're going to just pin through the X and through the X. X marks the spot on both sides. And then you're gonna maneuver this down so you've got the right angle so you can sew this. Now this, this is straight of grain and this is a bias. Bias goes on the bottom, right? So now we wanna do the same on the other side. There we go. And through the X, Through the X on the other side, where did the X go? Oh, it's right there. Okay. So now, bias is on the bottom. Right. So let's get this sewn. And we're just going to flip this out of the way. Move this and we'll get this sewn out of the way. So now, where you start is important. It's just as it's important because you don't want that. Right? Now you drop it down right on the X, and you pull your pin. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then all the way straight down. Just like that. These just make adorable little novelty blocks when they're done. Now, you can see I didn't sew that. So that's going to work to our advantage, right? So now let's get the other side sewn. Put the bias on the bottom, and you want to sew up to the point. And I'm gonna slow it down, just so you get right on that point. There we go, and then back, and then we're done. So now, you finger press that one open. And you see where this is. 
This is just a cute little, cute little tulip. Three different shades. One purple. And this side has got that little V open. And this side. Now, if you were doing needle turn applique, you would need that V open because that's where you need to turn your fabric. And that would create that perfect V, right, for your sewing. We're not going to do needle turn applique. We're going to do something a little quicker. <laughs> You're like, oh, yes, Brenda's always guaranteed to do something a little quicker. Okay, so I've got some really ultra light, really, really light interfacing here. And what I am going to do with it, I'm just going to line this up. And I'm not going to worry about grain or anything like this. I'm just going to cut this. So I cut a little piece off. And I, the lightest interfacing you can find. That's, that's what you're going to use right now. So what you're going to do is you're going to just maneuver this just a bit. And get your points pressed in place. <laughs> Tulips always make me think of spring. It's summertime in Canada right now when we're filming this, so it's um, a nice reminder that another spring is coming, I suppose. Anyway, let's get this. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to try and stay like a quarter inch around the outside, and I'm going to start at the tip. And I'm just going to slowly go through and negotiate that curve. Now it's a bigger curve, so it's fine. Now, when I get to the bottom, I want to kind of make sure and hold them close, open. All those seams open. Because that's the tightest part of your curve right now. And if, you know, yours doesn't look right or kind of, eh, you know, you can always put a little green bottom on them, you know, and just make it work, you know. Sometimes, you know, flowers have this little, like, leafy green thing at the bottom of their, before they hit the stem. Well, that, you can do that too. It's your flower, and if you don't like the way it looks, that's okay. Okay, now, whoops, and my foot fell off. There we go. Now, when you get to this area here, where you've got that, that little V, what you want to do is you want to make sure that it stays, oh, that stays flat. Because that's going to help your turning. And where you turn is right where that seam is. You go, even if you have to hand crank, hand crank your sewing machine, and then back up, right to the point. There we go. Now you're looking for that needle to pivot right in where that seam is. So you make your Y joint. There we go. Part. Now, now I'm just going to trim away this excess. I guess I should get a big scissor. That way you won't have to watch all this painfully trimming away stuff. one bit and another bit can you even see what I'm doing I'm just trimming away all the excess that's all there these are cute when you get a bunch of these I made a birdhouse quilt and I used a bunch of this motif because it was my mom's motif that she liked to do. So now we're going to take all the pins out first because that will make it easier to do this next step. 
and I'm going to make just a little slit here. Just a little slit. Just to make enough to turn it. And I'm going to out like this on both sides. Now I'm going to trim down the points as up to one eighth of an inch. Now I go long and narrow. I don't, you know, I just don't do 45. I do long and narrow. Because you reduce a lot of bulk that way. Right. Right to one eighth. There we go. Long and narrow. There. Yeah. Okay. More stuff to go into the dog bed pile. <sighs> the polka dot fabric, I'll just make another one of these. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to take a knitting needle or something and gently negotiate from the fabric side that point. You want to gently negotiate. You don't want to go through your interfacing because that would be bad. That would be very, very bad. You might not be able to recover from that one, depending how badly you rip it. But it's kind of, think of it as a, a negotiation of a point. And sometimes you get a, a point like that kind of bubbles. And what you do is you take a pin and you get like another negotiator. And you just gently lift that just so that it kind of looks more pointy. So you're holding this, not you're not like push putting a lot of pressure on, but you're holding it so that you can manage it. And then you're just pulling out this the best you can so it's a little more pointy. So there we go. I think that's about as pointy as we're going to get, but that's okay. Yeah. These are awfully fun to do. Um, I do, uh, when I do hand sewing at night, I find these are very relaxing. And if my, you know, again, if your top stitching isn't great, you can always like revert to some hand hand stitching around a blanket stitch or something to hide it. Hand stitching, embroidery stitching, blanket stitches like by hand serves a multitude of sins. Just amazing how many sins it covers. So now this has become very much open. Let me just clip the interfacing only to open it up a bit. You only want to clip just the interfacing because that the cloth is already open. And you just want to clip it down just a bit. And there is your tulip. So now we're going to give it a good press with our finger. And there we go. We're going to give it a good press with our finger. I think that's about as best best we can do and we're just going to put this there we go just like that give it a nice little finger press so you can't see the white can't really see the purple and the purple either but there we are so now what I'm going to do is I have a little scrap of green right now, what I can do with this is I can sew this to make a tube or, uh, yeah, I'll make, just make a quick tube and I'll give it a quick turn. Yes, yeah, give it a quick turn. There we go. It gives me my stem. Right. Now I'm just going to take this and fold it over like so. <sighs> I'm going to use a pencil because I think that would work. What I want to do is push as much of this into there and then pull on the edge. Yeah. 
It looks like you're stuffing something inside. But this will go right through because the ends aren't sewn. Oh, we're just like I say, this is just a quick stem disorder. Because we can add a leaf later or, you know, if we want. Now I've got it like this. I'm going to just give it a quick press down the center. Press down both sides. There we go. There's our stem. So let's get back our piece of fabric. I'm going to, there we go. I'm going to lay my tulip like this. And I'm just going to put this under, just like so. Now that little green cap there, if you wanted to make a little green leafy thing going on, you can. That's entirely up to you, but this is just a simple little little quick novelty block. Think of it as a novelty block that you could throw into a quilt, you know. Just a little bright happy thing. And uh, there's a story about tulips and the Dutch, or the people from Holland. We have a great, um, a great relationship because Holland gave Canada tulips because we were, we were allies or something. I'm not sure of all the story behind the tulips or why we have tulips in this country, but anyway, so I'm just going to quickly run a quick top stitch around here. Now I have gray, kind of a medium gray and it should work. Okay, let's get this top stitching done. Now, you start off your work at, at the end of your work, right at the edge of the block. And you're gonna trim this excess bit off, right? But you're just top stitching. You're gonna top stitch right up to, and including the flower. And then you're going to take it, and start top stitching around the edge. Basically you're securing it. Now if you wanted to do an embroidery stitch after and put little, you know, bullion knots in for the, you know, the pistons and the stamens and you can. That's perfectly that would look awesome. You know, people you get a real different wow factor with your quilts if you have a bunch of these little novelty blocks that are all dressed up, you know. And it does, it has a little bit of pizzazz to your quilt, you know. And not every one of them has to be all dressed, you know. It's whatever you think is appropriate. And we have perfect little angles in here because we left that sewing open, right? Just, and you would if you were doing regular needle turn applique too, you would have perfect little inside corners on this tulip. There we go. Okay. Gently follow the curve all the way down and across the bottom. Now, you want to go backwards across that bottom. And there we go. And now, we have the ta-da moment. Okay, aren't you guys glad I leave my mistakes in? Even I make mistakes. It's okay. Now, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to put this as a novelty block. And I'm just before I, sh yeah, I'll show you the back, right? That's what it looks like. You pull away, you cut out all the stuff that you don't need just to reduce bulk in your block, right? So that now it lies nice and flat. And it's, if you planned on doing an embroidery stitch around here, like a blanket stitch or, you know, some kind of like other embroidery or using your fancy stitches on your machine, go for it. Because now this is ready. Um, I will be making another one of the petals, right, with a different center, just because I have these two pieces now drawn out. And I did this one wrong, so I have to make another one. But that's, you know, that's working with what you've got. So all I need now is to cut a center out. Now I'm good to go. I used a very lightweight, ultra lightweight interfacing. And we just got this from Amazon. 
and it's kicking around it's been kicking around my sewing room for a while so that it just you know it's just easy to to use up and move out it's nothing special um i'm not sure even what brand it is but it's a very lightweight you can just pick it up on amazon so anyways i hope you have a wonderful week ahead i hope you win bob and chicken with all your sewing projects i haven't won bob and chicken in months so <laughs> okay you have a great day okay bye my husband and i would like to thank you for watching today we're so happy about the way our channel has grown and we just want to wish you so well in your journey along with us please like share and subscribe and tell your friends now the next thing is this quilt we are wondering if you guys would like this quilt as a free sew along on this channel this fall this coming fall winter we were kind of thinking that this one would be really fun to do we could do it in a larger size or a smaller size it's up to you but this one was a lot of fun to make and it's all it it lends itself to being hand stitched but you can also do this on a sewing machine as well so let us know in the comments below remember share like subscribe tell your friends okay have a great week ahead bye